And you mentioned Pete Hegseth as well, and we know that he's facing a lot of attacks from the left right now, too. Why did Donald Trump feel that he was the right person for the job? Well, Pete is a warfighter. He's someone who, you know, not only is incredibly educated, went to, went to Princeton University, graduated from there, went to Harvard University, got an advanced degree from there. And then he's a warfighter. He's a soldier's soldier, a man who has received numerous accommodations for his work in the battlefield. He's not a general, which means he's not a politician. He understands what every gunnery sergeant needs to do their job. He's been on the front lines. He served at Gitmo. He served in forward areas. And so if we actually want fundamental reform, of an organization that has about 3 million employees, meaning the Department of Defense, and almost a trillion dollar budget. They've got about a $900 billion budget. If we wanna do things the old fashioned way, which is allowing the military industrial complex to continue to make money by rotating generals uh, from the Pentagon over to their boards and vice versa, then we could have done that under this administration, which is exactly what they've done. But Pete Hegseth is an outside the box thinker who wants to make sure that the people on the ground have an opportunity to have the resources they need. And what are we seeing? Retention is already up because Pete Hegseth is going to be the next Secretary of Defense. And our recruitment efforts are already increasing because people want to serve under Donald Trump and Pete Hegseth. Yeah, you mentioned something that's so important. He's not a politician. It seems like Donald Trump is starting to surround himself with quite a few influential people who are from outside of Washington, D.C. and the swamp, which appears to be a good thing. Um, so speaking of politicians, Vice President Kamala Harris has returned from her Hawaiian vacation. And she has a little message for Democrats. Take a look. Again, I'll say, you yeah, know, the, the election didn't turn out like we wanted it to. Certainly not as we planned for it to. But understand that the work we put into it was about empowering people. That's the spirit with the work we did. I'm still not really sure what she meant to say uh, or what she was doing in that 10 minute uh, rant. Do you think that she emerges as the face of the Democrat Party moving forward? Is she the face of the Democrat Party in 2028? Boy, I, I sure hope she is, because that word salad once again proves that she is incapable of, of delivering an articulate message to the American people. And what did we see? We saw her senior campaign advisors blame the questions that she was asked by the interviewers on her failed campaign. They have taken no accountability for running a dismal campaign, for having no message, for continuing to allow men to be in girls' sports, which is what they uh, were in favor of to continue to allow an open border, which they have been in favor of, to continue to say that there were no policies that the Biden administration had that they would change. And when 70 percent of Americans say that the country is moving in the wrong direction, they were so tone deaf that the American people not only voted for Donald Trump in an overwhelming majority, but sent a Republican uh, U.S. Senate to Washington, D.C. to make sure that his agenda gets done. Yeah, you mentioned that people voted for policy on November 5th. They didn't vote for personality, but now we're looking at the new Emerson College poll and Donald Trump's favorability rating is now at 54%. It's jumped six points since he was elected. What do you make of that? Well, what I make of that is the American people have spoken loud and clear. They're seeing a 401ks increasing. Donald Trump has pledged that within a year, our energy costs will be down and people have hope again. Hope that our country can be the leader that it used to be when he was in the White House, that our enemies around the world fear us and that our allies respect us, that we put Americans first, that we close the border, that we take care of the bad individuals, those criminals who are in this country, we deport them. Look, his approval rating continues to increase because he's surrounding himself with a who's who, the very best that the American people have to offer to come to government service because they want to see this country great again. And it's very exciting for the American people. Corey Lewandowski, thank you for joining me this morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Information. Truth. Is freedom. Is Newsmax. It's real news for real people.